While the eastern section of Ardoin portrays the city as a bustling hub for trade and communications, the western area could not be more different. Ravaged by a great plague, the inhabitants were quarantined for many years, but all was not how it seems. I'm Aris Galaxy Shark, and this is RuneScape Lore. Years ago, the city of West Ardoin was walled off and quarantined following the outbreak of a terrible plague. This plague was highly contagious and would, supposedly, have a severe effect on the lives of the infected. Once a person contracted the disease, they would experience a mild flu for the first few days, but after that it would become much, much worse. The victim would soon begin to hallucinate and experience horrible nightmares, likely leading to sleep deprivation that would only worsen the effects. Alongside the extreme mental trauma, their body would transform. Their skin would become stone cold and their blood would turn into a viscous black chemical. Somehow they would continue to live, although now almost completely brain dead, doing nothing besides spreading the plague to the uninfected around them. Due to the awful symptoms and contagiousness, it was decided that the bodies should be cremated in isolation to help maintain the spread. This would only happen a mere two weeks after first signs of the illness. To control the plague and prevent an outbreak into the rest of Gilinor, a group of highly trained, well-equipped doctors were sent to the city by King Lathus, ruler of East Ardoin. It soon became apparent that they were less like doctors in fact, and were more akin to undertakers, wearing special suits to protect them from the plague. It was their job to dispose of the bodies of the infected. They did this by taking them to a highly secret location, and this secrecy was intentional, as any civilian who was present would be at risk of catching the plague. Being the only ones present at the cremations of the dead, this group earned the title of the Mourners. The other job of the Mourners was to ensure that nothing made it in or out of the city without it going through them first. Since the Mourners were the only people allowed in and out of the city, they are the only people who had seen the effects of the plague and lived to tell the tale so all that we know of the symptoms comes directly from them. It was also the mourners who discovered the source of the disease. King Tyrus was the brother of King Lathus and ruled over West Ardoin. While Tyrus had been working to expand his city, stretching further west to the mountains of Arundar, the entrance to a strange underground pass was discovered. This pass, while dangerous in itself, turned out to be a far easier and safer way to Tyrannin, the Elven Lands, offering an alternative to trekking over the near impassable mountains. The temptation of a new land was too much for the king, who began to make regular expeditions to the far west of Gilinor. Allegedly, King Tyrus, on his regular trips to the elven lands, had brought the disease with him back to his city. This, understandably, angered the people of West Ardoin, who had essentially been sentenced to an inevitable death by their ruler. But little could be done to overthrow him or stage an uprising, as he was almost constantly absent. With no way to save the people of West Ardoin, and only one person to blame for the suffering, Lathus recruited the adventurer, explaining to them that Tyrus was the enemy of Ardoin and should be assassinated. After navigating the underground pass and rebuilding a catapult situated near King Tyrus's camp by the Western Sea, the World Guardian fired an explosive payload that incinerated the King's tent killing him in the process. After returning to East Ardoin, the tables turned. It soon became apparent that Lathus's intentions were not exactly as they seemed, and that the people of Ardoin, and in fact the rest of Kandarin, had been misled. Almost everything we had been told about the plague and the people involved was wrong. The mourners were indeed working with King Lathus, but as it turned out, they were not actually humans. In fact, they were elves, part of the Prifdinus Death Guard. The Death Guard were a part of the Iworth clan, the clan that had betrayed the others many years prior. It was actually the mourners who had introduced the so-called plague to West Ardoin by poisoning the food supply with mouldy food like apples to make those who ate it fall sick. The true plague was little more than a flu and some food poisoning, but this was enough to convince the civilians that the infected should be taken away before it became far worse. Instead of being euthanized and cremated, the victims of the disease were taken underground and healed within a matter of days. Since everyone else on the surface was convinced that their friends were dead, the mourners knew that no one would suspect them of stealing people. Once healed, the person would be forced to work in a cave system near the mourner headquarters, 
a tunnel that was believed to lead to the Temple of Light. Most of these slaves would either be worked to death or killed by the nearby Dark Beasts. Built years ago before the fall of Prithinus, the Temple of Light was built to protect the Death Altar, preventing those who threatened the Elves from harnessing its powers. Lord Iowerth was one of these people. Hoping to claim the Elven city for himself, Lord Iowerth attempted to free the Dark Lord from his prison, a task that would require the power of the Death Altar. Not even King Lathus, the one human ally of the Mourners, truly knew what was happening. Lathus planned to use the Elves to expand his rule and claim more of the land that his late father, King Ulthus, had not retained in the years following his death. In return, the Death Guard would be granted access into West Ardoin and freedom to do as they please inside. Lord Iowerth had no intention of fulfilling the deal though, simply using Lathus to build a cheap workforce and get closer to his goal of freeing the Dark Lord. The assassination of King Tyrus was actually ordered by the Elven Lord, not King Lathus. Seeing the power and speed with which Tyrus was crossing Tyrannon, and realising that the human posed a great threat to his end goal, Iworth suggested that the ruler of East Ardoin find a gullible adventurer who could be convinced to kill his brother. This happened to be the World Guardian. King Tyrus actually had nothing to do with the plague, and possibly didn't even know that it was happening due to his constant absence. During the events of Plague's End, when the Dark Lord was freed and faced by the other seven clans, Lord Iworth was exposed and the plot to expose Lathus for faking the plague finally came to fruition. While the elves rebuilt their city, the people of East Ardoin staged an uprising against their king. The knights returned to the castle and prepared to save the people of West Ardoin. With the knights hoping to remove the mourners, and the mourners having little to work for anymore, it did not take long for the mourner HQ to be taken over by the knights of Ardoin. Since the so-called plague had been solely artificial, its spreading was stopped immediately, and the civilians, aside from still living in poverty, became healthy and happier under their new, far more noble rule. Few elves know of the heinous crimes committed by Lord Iowerth, so have little qualms with him. The humans of Gilinor do though, and understandably place significant blame on the clan. With the influence of the mourners eradicated, and the source of the plague removed, it seems as though the story of the plague will remain in the past, perhaps eventually being forgotten as far greater threats face Gilinor. Since the lore is done, this video is too. If you've got a suggestion for a future video, make sure you comment down below, and hit that subscribe button to get notified when I upload next. Don't worry, you won't catch disease from touching the button. Thank you for watching this video all the way through. I've been Aris Galaxy Shark, and I'll see you next time.